We are here to inspire, inform, and connect a community of entrepreneurs. This is Business Rockstars. I'm Pat O'Brien. Our guest is Sidlan Kalach. How are you? Co-founder of Holberton School. Um, welcome. Thank you. What is Holberton School? So Holberton School is an alternative to college. We are training software engineers uh, in a two-year program uh, using a project-based methodology, which means that we have no formal teachers and no lectures. Students are learning by practicing and collaborating with their peers. They always say in America, you're from France, right? I am. Uh, that the, the only place you really learn anything is by doing it and in the streets. Yet they put you through 12 years of <laughs> high school <laughs> to teach you those skills. This is a, uh, can we call this an entrepreneurial school? So it's designed uh, to teach software engineering. Uh, so we are mainly uh, training software engineers, but most importantly, we are uh, teaching problem solving and the ability to student to learn how to learn, which is basically a growth mindset that any entrepreneur needs. Um, actually, from the first cohort of uh, 32 students that started the curriculum in January, uh, three of them uh, started their startup and uh, one of them actually uh, raised a bit of funding to, to start his own business. Did you always want to be an entrepreneur? Um, Back in France? Yeah. I guess I was always working on side projects. Uh, I always wanted to do more outside of my job, and I think the key was to uh, meet my uh, current co-founder, Julien Barbier, uh, with who we uh, created a lot of, of projects, including Olberton School. Mm -hmm. um, how much money did you need to start this? So we raised uh, $2 million. Uh, what would you sell it as? An alternative school, a community college? So, yeah, when you think about it, like basically, um, you know, the U.S. economy is thriving because, um, you know, the, the, the company are doing well, right? And, um, you know, our VCs are all tech VCs, so they, 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 they invest in a lot of tech companies. The issue with this is that this tech company cannot keep their growth because they cannot hire, right? So then uh, it's, it's like slowing down. And when you see how China, you know, is like, is like doing in sky, like, like there is a lot of talent, a lot of fund. And basically if, if the US economy wants to stay like at, at the top level, they, they need more talent. So I think for the VCs, you know, it's, um, it's a way for them to make sure that their company are gonna get the talent they need. And the second thing is that uh, Holberton School is a for-profit company, but with a social intent, meaning that students do not pay anything before or during the school. Um, our success is aligned with the success of our students. Mm -hmm. So we take a percentage <coughs> of the salary of the students once uh, they find a job, if they find a job. Meaning that if we do good at training our students, we'll get money back. And if we don't train them well, then we don't get anything. Has it been hard to explain this to give investors? We have investors. Um, I think it's, it was not hard because everything we do at Holberton School is uh, done to scale. So basically, before starting this company, I was working for LinkedIn as a software engineer. And my co-founder, Julien, was working for Docker. Uh, which is uh, one of these unicorns. Right. And um, we built tech communities, um, Julien for Docker, and um, with him as a hobby on the side for the French tech community, uh, which is called White42. Uh, it's a community of uh, French tech developers around the world, uh, located in 40 cities, 3,000 members. And so basically, you know, we can scale software because we are software right. engineers, and we can scale human. Uh, because we build community, which are the two components of a school. Um, and when you talk to VCs, obviously they want companies that scale, right? Business plans uh, that scale, and uh, they knew our past, and um, that's how we convinced them. Did you always want to uh, uh, devise an alternative school? I mean, who does that? <laughs> yeah, it's a very good question. Uh, so with my past, you know, uh, we Wild 42 and... Uh, as an entrepreneur uh, and an extra expatriate in, in the Bay Area, there is a lot of French people coming in. And Julian and I are always I love to help people, you know, to find a job, partnership, you know, speak to journalists, investors, and so on. So helping is very in our DNA. And on the other side, you know, when, so before LinkedIn, I was working for SlideShare, which was a small startup. It's like YouTube for PowerPoint. We are less than 50 people, and we were trying to recruit engineers. We could not find anyone. 
And then in 2012, uh, we got acquired for 120 million. And then I was working for LinkedIn, which was a 10,000 um, 10, um, employee company, right? And as well, we could not find any engineers. And something that struck me is that you had like people just out of college, they spent like nearly half a decade studying and they had like hundreds of thousands of debt, but they could not even do the job, yeah. you know? Yeah. And I was like, yeah, well, this is broken, you know? So if there is something to do, right? So we knew about alternative um, education methodology, uh, actually that is used in France. 40% uh, of software engineers over there are trained this way. Uh, actually, the CTO and founder of Docker is out of a, a program right. like that. There are so many things you have to do to start a school. Uh, did you do anything different? I mean, you have to be accredited, state accredi accreditation, uh, teachers, What you know, there's a lot of stuff. Yeah. Do you follow all those rules? So we are working on accreditation. Uh, it's something that uh, takes years. Uh, you need to have a batch of students that is graduated since two years to um, you know, start the accreditation process. So it's something we're working on. But there is a shift in the tech industry where basically um, the, the companies are more about what can you do instead of where did you study, right? right. So software engineering is, not, is all about doing. So how students are getting hired, how candidates are getting hired is by passing technical interviews. Can you do the job? Yes, you can, then you are hired. You cannot do the job, then you are out, right? Um, so you have a lot of uh, prestigious companies that used to you know, basically discriminate based on your diploma. That is uh, going away. Uh, regarding teachers, we have no formal teachers. Um, no teachers? No formal teacher, which means that we are... Me neither. I didn't recognize <laughs> any of my teachers. <laughs> yeah, like it's, it's mentors. Right. So those are people Good working idea. in the tech industry, right? And basically, uh, students are becoming software engineers. We are here to guide them, right? And think about it like if you are working in a company, your manager will assign you tasks. And then if you are stuck, you can talk to your coworker, to your manager, you know, to, to seek help. Think a whole Burton school is the same. If you, cannot, if you need to find something, you Google it. If you don't find it, you ask your peers. Yeah. And then if, you don't, if your peers cannot answer, then you ask mentors. I'm one of them as a staff member, and then you have 150 of them. Some of them are available on Slack. Some of them come at the school to give meetups, keynote. Uh, some of them uh, do office hour or coaching. So you know, like there is like a, a, a whole like a <coughs> team of professionals who are here to make sure you are going the right way. How much is a ton of gravel? How much what? Is a ton of gravel. That's like some like screw up like question from Google, right? <laughs> no, there's only one person I know who got that right, and that's Donald Trump. Oh, oh yeah? What, what's, what's that? What, what did he then say? Dollar 75 <laughs> for a ton. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not in the- kind of stuff you ought to be teaching in your school. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, sure. I'm not in real, real estate business yet, but <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> maybe one day. Um, uh, so how many teachers do you have now? Zero. So you have mentors. How many mentors? Mentors, are at the 150. Uh -huh. And they come in on their own, or? Yeah, it's we are very very flexible. You know, one of um, you know the most prestigious is uh, uh, Cuomo, who is the CTO of IBM. Uh, obviously, he cannot come every day, you know. But um, we have you know software engineer, project manager, investor, journalist, recruiter, marketing people, mm -hmm. and they are here for two things. The first thing is to guide students to enter the tech industry properly. So they are here to you know, share their experience, answer questions, and then um, they are here to guide the school. The truth is that I'm just out of the tech industry. I know what's up, but maybe in a few years, I'm going to be a dinosaur, right? I'm, I'm, I'm going to be out of sync, right? We're all going to be dinosaurs <laughs> yeah. in a few years. <laughs> so that's why you know we have like, um, mentors who are here to make sure that our curriculum is up to date. And if not, you know, we are correcting it. They are helping us to, you know, like, like shape it. And also because in the, the third part of the school, we have specialization. So we are like picking the brain of the experts in the area to like design the curriculum. So for now, we have 150 uh, mentors, uh, but the, li the list is growing strong. Right. And what kind of jobs these people get when they leave? So, yeah, so for Not the- Not these people, your students. The students, yeah. Uh, so out of the um, uh, first batch, we got some like prestigious uh, company. Uh, we got two students at Apple, uh, two students at Dropbox, mm -hmm. uh, one student at Docker, 
and uh, one student at NASA. Uh, and all these jobs were software engineers' job. Uh, but as you as as you say, like um, I think some of them will become entrepreneur, uh, you know, in their life, like later in their life, because they have this growth mindset, you know, like they are able to learn how to learn. If if there is something they don't know, it's not an issue for them. You know, they can go on the internet, speak to people in the industry, and right. grab all the knowledge they need to yep. like become. They'll figure people. it out. Yeah, exactly. We are here to inspire, inform, and connect a community of entrepreneurs. This is Business Rockstars. I'm Pat O'Brien. Back in a minute. We are here to inspire, inform, and connect a community of entrepreneurs all over the world. I'm Pat O'Brien. This is Business Rockstars. Sylvain Kalach is our, is our guest who uh, is a co-founder of the Holberton School. You know, a lot of people come in here and they say they, they didn't want to go to the traditional nine-to-five job. So this seems pitch perfect. This seems perfect for somebody who just wants to learn a particular trade or learn how to be an entrepreneur uh, for free. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's actually we most of the day we have no like time schedule, so you come at the school whenever you want. The school is open twenty four hour seven. What matters is deadline, right? So uh, you know we ass assign the student tasks and projects, and then they have to complete them uh, by the deadline. And if they don't, then you know they get zero. Um, and the second thing is that. Uh, a lot of, like, the more we go in the project, the more uh, students have, the, like, flexibility to create whatever they want. They mm -hmm. have to respect a bunch of criteria, but, um, you know, then with software, there are many ways to, to achieve the same thing. So it's not really so much a school as it is a mentorship program. Yes. I think, you know, like, training software engineers is kind of an excuse to... Uh, train people who can learn by themselves and who have this growth mindset, right? Um, and then we are here as a community to basically guide the student to get into this industry. And, you know, getting out of Holberton School, um, students will be able to find a job directly, will be able to grow in their career, and will have a network of, like, highly skilled professionals. Do people come to you to find uh, kids with jobs or kids with the experience? Yes. We have a lot of companies. Like, in the Bay Area, there are 50,000 unfilled jobs mm -hmm. that require software engineering skills. Um, so we Do they pay you something? No, they don't, but that could be a possibility in the future. Mm -hmm. um, what's your launch room like? Uh, that's a very good question. So actually we put a lot of, um, lot of energy into the design of the school. Um, <coughs> first, we wanted to emulate a startup on coca van every night? Uh, no, we don't. <laughs> Not that much, but... Uh, it's very well designed, actually. Um, it's too bad I have no picture, but um, it's uh, designed to be very comfortable because some of our <coughs> students are spending more than 10 hours at the school. Mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, there is no secret from, we know we pick students who have absolutely no prior experience in software engineering to a job at Dropbox or a job at Apple. There is a lot of hours to put in, right? And so the school is open 24 hours. Some students come as early as five. Some students stay until four. Sometimes don't sleep at all, right? Uh, but but the design is like really cool. What are the what's the testing process? Who makes out the tests? So basically, we want um, we want to provide quality education to the most, which means no matter what your age, no matter what your gender, ethnicity, um, you know, scholar or professional past, um, we basically don't care about your past. Uh, what we assess about is based on motivation, uh, talent, our definition of talent, and ability to collaborate. So the admission process is split into three parts. Uh, everything is done online, and everything is assessed by a computer, which means that there is no discrimination and no human bias, because I am or any of the staff is um, taking part well, of the Well, there's human sections. bias if you, if you design the program. So we designed the program with like mentors and its algorithm, you know, testing the abilities. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there is very little 
room for our subjectivity in you know software uh, and also we don't really test the technical ability but more first are you mot motivated and uh, do you have talent so um, sure it's the talent is um, is subjective right <coughs> uh, depending on the type of training you are um, providing some student might or might not be you know suited for that um, a school without teacher can be you know like challenging for some of the students. Um, but I think we got very great uh, diversity result. Uh, for the first batch, we have 40% women, uh, nearly 50% people of color, and the age uh, goes from 17 to 58. We have people who were musician, uh, pizza delivery driver, school counselor. Uh, it's like really all over the place. And uh, that's like also a strength of the school is that you are working in a diverse environment. You know, a lot of uh, people come in here and they said that they couldn't get out of college fast enough, that they wanted to start their own business, they wanted yeah. to learn how to be an entrepreneur. And quite frankly, uh, it's growing, but there's not a lot of entrepreneurial courses yeah. around the country. So you basically are filling that gap, do you think? Yeah, I think we are filling that gap. Um, our curriculum is only two years long, but students start working after nine months, which means that... Um, for this, basically you have nine months on site, six months job or internship, and the nine remaining months, you can do them either full-time at the school, or you can do, do it remotely while keeping your job. You leave the school with people lining up to hire the kids for certain jobs. Yeah, we have a lot of people who, like mentors, one of their interests is to hire, obviously, right? So they mm -hmm. come at the school, they, they make sure the curriculum is up to what they would like, and, you know, they, they, like, they mingle with students and... Uh, actually, one of the value of mentors is that they come on site to do fake interviews, right, to make you practice as a student. But sometimes they like the fake interviews so much that they actually uh, mm -hmm. do a job offer. How and where do you come up with your new curriculum, new ideas? So the curriculum, like every quarter we meet with mentors, you know, working for top companies like, you know, Google, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and also startups. Uh, and basically, we sit down and, and we look at, uh, you know, what's our curriculum like, and then we decide on how we change it. Mm -hmm. And you change the curriculum much? We change it, uh, like, every quarter, for mm -hmm. sure. And sometimes, also, we adapt it while the students are going through. Because sometimes, you know, perhaps we came up with a new bricks, a new part, and maybe it's too hard, or maybe it's too easy, right? So if it's too hard, we'll, act, we'll quickly add another project to make sure that they understood the concept. And if it's too easy, perhaps we'll, we'll reduce. So the curriculum is dynamic, and the vision of the school is to provide a quality education to the most. So long term, we want to open a lot of schools, right? And, um, you know, like, depending of where you are geographically located, the type of uh, technology that students need to know will, will, will be different. For example, yeah. But, but isn't it hard just to open a school? Um, you can't just open a school, right? Yeah, no, it's true. I think, uh, so with Julien, my partner, we, we are like um, closely involved with our school back in France. Mm -hmm. uh, the school of Julien is practicing a similar um, curriculum in terms of like, mm -hmm. um, you know, peer learning and project based. So Julien has been through this curriculum for five years and we, you know, we are in, in constant like communication with them. And so we learned a lot this way. And uh, I think, you know, the school didn't come, come like, like this in a day, right? It's something that, it's an idea that, um, you know, matured in our head, and then we talked to a lot of people and got feedback. Sometimes people disliked it, and eventually we decided to quit our job to, to start this startup. Right. Do you have mentors yourself? I think Holberton School is not about Julian and I, it's about the community, which are, you know, alumni and mentors. Um, I do not have, like, an assigned personal mentors, but... Uh, we know a lot of entrepreneurs in, um, in the Silicon Valley. And actually, uh, three VCs uh, invested in, in, in Holberton School, but we have also a dozen of um, you know, mentors. One of them is the CTO and co-founder of SlideShare, uh, John Boutel, which is, uh, is helping us a lot. Uh, and we have like a, a lot of other mentors who themselves are or have been entrepreneurs. So for lunch, is Coca Van and the new Beaujolais Village, right? <laughs> yes. Okay. Exactly. I like the way this guy thinks. <laughs> uh, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Nice to see you. Uh, this is uh, Business Rockstars. We're here to inspire, inform, and connect a community of entrepreneurs. I'm Pat O'Brien. We'll see you next time.